Watch more programs like this on cable and stream with PCN Select. Subscribe at PCNTV.com. Hi, my name is Taylor Mason, and I'm the Outreach Archivist here at the Pennsylvania House of Representatives Archives. Today we're going to be showing you a new exhibit called 100 Years of Women, which looks at the women of the Pennsylvania House from 1923 to 2022. If you're visiting the Capitol Complex, you want to visit the Irvis Building. You can take the elevators to the sixth floor of the Irvis Office Building, and the archives is located on the sixth floor. There will be signs throughout the building directing you, or you can talk to a Capitol Tour Guide or staff member for more directions. Let's take a look. This poster here talks about the first eight women who were elected to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. They were all Republican. They were elected in 1922 and started serving in 1923. We'll go from left to right and I'll tell you a little bit more about each of the members. So right here is Sarah Gallagher. She was from Cambria County. She's also our first female to beat a male incumbent member of the House. Sarah Gertrude McKinney is from Butler County. Martha Spizer is from Philadelphia County. Rosa DeYoung is the next one. She's also from Philadelphia. Martha Thomas is from Chester County. We'll talk more about her later. We do have some memorabilia from her collection. Alice Bentley is from Crawford County, and she's our first female chair. She chaired the Education Committee. Helen Grimes is from Allegheny County, and Lily Pitts is also from Philadelphia County. So these are our first eight women who were serving in the House. They were all Republican, and below we have some photos of them gathered for this momentous occasion. Here we have some artifacts and photographs from former member Martha Gibbons Thomas, who was one of our first eight women elected to the House. She was from Chester County, and she served from 1923 to 1926. We have two photographs of her on the top here, one with her family, and the other one is with one of her cows from her farm in Chester County. She was very passionate about agriculture, and the item below the photograph are some meeting notes from when she was on the Agricultural Committee. On the left is an invitation to a state sesquicentennial celebration in Harrisburg. And in the middle is an article from a magazine interview she conducted when she was elected. And one of her interesting quotes says that about women in public education and public politics, that is so desired by the people of the district to demonstrate that women being new and inexperienced were willing to learn by actually going through the elections and to help pave way for other women to hold office in local and state positions. These outfits here are examples of what women would have worn in the suffragette era and possibly what would have been worn when women were serving in the house. These two outfits are on loan from the Shippensburg University Fashion Archives and Museum. The one on the left, the two-piece green suit, is an example of what women would have worn maybe in the house or on the street at a formal occasion. That was made in Pennsylvania in Bryn Mawr. And on the right is the other example of what suffragette women would have worn at a formal occasion. To my right is a picture and a pamphlet from Lilith Wilson when she was in the House of Representatives. She was our only socialist and our only third party female candidate to ever serve in the House. And she was from Berks County. To my right are two books. One is from Margaret George who wrote about her career in the House and also her later career with the Department of Education in Pennsylvania. And on the other side is from Faith Whittlesley, who actually was the ambassador to Switzerland under the Reagan administration. And this book talks about her experiences working in that role. Here we have two House floor seating charts to show the differences of women serving in 1923 and from our last session in 2021-2022. Here is our first house seating chart. All the yellow blocks are from the first eight women where they sat on the house floor. These are the first eight women that I showed you earlier in the exhibit. And on the other side are the women from the last term where they all sat. So you can see the vast differences between the two. And in today's current term, we're now up to 215 women serving since 1923. And our current term has over 60 women serving in the Pennsylvania House. In this part of our exhibit, we're going to show you more about diversity of women of the Pennsylvania House. Here is an Ebony magazine from 1967. Ebony was a magazine featured 
on African Americans. And they, in this edition, they did a specific feature on black lawmakers, more specifically female ones. We have two features from Pennsylvania. One is Sarah Anderson, who is actually our first black female chair of a committee. And on her right is another picture of Susie Monroe. In this poster here, we're gonna start talking about diversity in the house, more specifically black lawmakers who served in the house. Our first feature is Crystal Bird Fawcett, who you see here. She was the first African American woman to serve in any state legislature in 1938. She served here until 1940, when she later took a position for the Philadelphia WPA education program. And because of her involvement in that, the Roosevelt actually tapped her and asked her to become a special director of the Office of Civilian Events in New York City in 1941. Below that is Louise Williams Bishop, who was elected to represent Philadelphia's 192nd District in 1988. She was elected to 13 sessions, making her the longest serving female black legislator. She was chair of the House Children and Youth Committee and later served as secretary for the Philadelphia Caucus and chair of the Philadelphia delegation. Over to my left are some more pictures of Crystal Bird Fawcett, who I mentioned earlier. And below that is Susie Monroe, and this is a campaign ad during her election. This poster here discusses the Equal Rights Amendment in the early 1970s. At the top, you'll see a picture of Representative Gerald Kaufman, who introduced House Bill 1678 and House Bill 14, which called for an amendment to the Constitution of Pennsylvania and prohibiting discrimination based on gender. Um, it was passed by both the House and Senate and was sent through a ballot initiative later on in 1971. Under that, you'll see Representative Anita P. Kelly, who in 1972 introduced House Bill 2070, which was a similar identical proposal to the Constitution um, for Pennsylvania based on the Equal Rights Amendment. So this was a joint resolution which passed the House and the Senate, making Pennsylvania one of the earliest states to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. And at the bottom, you'll see a picture of William Wilt, who originally was a negative vote on House Bill 2070, so he did not support the Equal Rights Amendment, but later on changed his vote and by saying on the House floor, I have always known that it does not pay to play games with the ladies, but that is exactly what I was doing here and I was caught, Mr. Speaker. I wish to be recorded in the affirmative, please, on House Bill number 2070. So with his vote, it already did pass, but he wanted to change his vote to affirmative. Next poster is on women who took over for male relatives in their family in the house. So currently 12 women to date have took over their, their husband's positions after they died. Three were actually elected after their husband retired. But at the top, we have Marion Munley, who's one example. She was a house member from 19, her husband was a member from 1939 until 1947 when he passed away. She was later reelected to his position and served here. And she was actually in a leadership position and served as Democratic Caucus Secretary. Below that is Frances Jones, who was elected in a special election again, following the passing of her husband, Granville Jones. And she was very successful in her time in office. She helped to lead a bill passed, which allowed funds for counties to bury indigent, indigent persons Below that is Elizabeth Wind, who again was reelected after her husband's death in 1961. And on the bottom is Rose Toll, who once again, you see a pattern here of women taking over their deceased husband's roles in the house. In this part of the exhibit, we're featuring our first female Democratic member, Anna Brancato. Here is a picture of her with all her male colleagues in 1933. And as you get closer to the picture, you can see she's our only female Democratic member at that term. These posters here, all the pictures were graciously donated from her nephew, Albert Brancato. And he gave us all these pictures to use for this exhibit. But Anne Brancato was our first female Democratic member elected to the House in 1932. She served the Philadelphia 5th District. She was elected to four more sessions, and she was one of the first women to preside over a formal organization of a House session. So you can see this picture here in 1935. 
on the other poster discusses more of her time with her house service. Um, one of her favorite bills that she passed or tried to pass was a known as the Hasty Marriage Act, which required a three-day waiting period for people to get married. Um, she was quoted as saying that this law would make marriage a little more safe and sane and allows for the hangover to clear up and prevents many hasty alcoholic marriages which begin in a fog and end in disaster. After her time in office, she also worked for the Roosevelt's, more specifically Eleanor. She was in support of other Democratic candidates, was very involved in female politics and Philadelphia politics. This case here shows memorabilia from the R Collection, featured women who served from the 1980s through 1990s. I'll just point out a few things here. We have Connie Main. In the back corner, some memorabilia from her collection, including a ribbon and a pamphlet on child sex abuse. In front of that is a photo and a campaign event ticket for Linda Bigco Jones, whose poster is also next to the case. In the very front, we have uh, speech cards from former member Eleanor Taylor. We also have items on loan from our collection from Susan Laughlin. And in front of that, you'll actually see it's a card for her husband, Charles Laughlin, who died in office. And it was too late for her to redo campaign materials. So they used his existing campaign materials, crossed out the items they needed to, and put her name in it. In the middle is Kathy Mandarino. We have some items on from her, um, also daughter of former speaker James Mandarino. In the very front is a license plate and picture from Carmel Sirianni. We have a newsletter and picture from Carol Rubley. And on the very end is an award and a photograph from Sheila Miller. This case here shows women that were serving from the mid-1990s to more current times. I'll just show you a few memorabilia pieces we have highlighted here. To my left, your right, is a picture of Ellen Bard in the back corner. In front of that is some photographs from Julie Harhart. In the back here are more pictures from Rosita Youngblood. In the middle, right here, we have some pictures of Mary Ann Daly. In front of that are some campaign items and a picture of Chelsea Wagner. And behind here, we have a Kate Harper pot gripper, as well as some other campaign items from her collection. In the very front corner, is a picture and a campaign pin from Helen Ty, who won a special election a few years ago. And in the back corner are items from Jane Claire Ori, including a speech. And we also have her district office sign next to the case. If you're interested in learning more about women of the house, we do have a book that features women, all women from 1923 up till 2020. There's also a QR code on one of our exhibit posters if you wanna see it in person or this book is available online on our website. Included in our exhibit is a small section on women's suffrage to give you a background of how hard women had to fight for the right to vote. We have a poster on women's suffrage and a background on what started that movement and also a section on the justice bell. And also included in our exhibit is a small section on loan from the Penn State Harrisburg Archives and Special Collections featuring campaign pins, sheet music, and cards. Thank you so much for joining us today on this small tour of our new exhibit called 100 Years of Women, which looks at the women of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives from 1923 to 2022. If you'd like more information, we are on social media, and you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.